So what happens to the middle-aged man? That's the question of the week. And I found this question in the newspaper today in the Dear Abby column, which I read every day because I'm interested in what happens in people's lives. So um, this woman writes, what the heck happens to men between the ages of 45 and 60? It seems the women thereafter are all 15 to 20 years younger. I don't mean just for sex, but for dating, love, and marriage too. We middle-aged women are often overlooked because these middle-aged guys don't realize we are, at, we are at our sexual peak and often hot as hell. And we're active in many interesting and fulfilling activities. I like the way this woman writes. By the time these men come to their senses, they are usually washed up and impotent. Why is nature and society so cruel and unfair? How can I, as a sexy, active, middle-aged woman, beat the odds? I do not intend to remain celibate and alone for the rest of my life. Well, my dear, you don't have to remain alone for the rest of your life. Definitely not celibate. Um, let me explain. Um, the, when it comes to man and their sexuality, they were given a Ferrari. A very beautiful, slick, sexy Ferrari that had a powerful engine that worked from day one on and just wants to go and go and go and fast and fast. That's what we need for procreation and that's what they got. Then as they get older, since we're getting older and older and older, as they get older they have to learn how to drive a Volkswagen. And a lot of men are not good at that. It doesn't mean that they don't appreciate, it doesn't mean that they don't recognize that a middle-aged woman is um, could be at her sexual peak it is they need a younger woman to for them to be able to stay in the fantasies of still being young still driving that ferrari now i know that doesn't make any sense but those are for men who are just are not willing to evolve and they don't want to learn that their body has gotten older so they do that they stay in the fantasy um, the pharmaceutical companies are helping them staying there with Cialis, uh, Levitra and Viagra but it's really not reality it's fantasy and when it comes to women and their sexuality to keep the analogy of cars going um, we were given a minivan where driving is second to having children and driving children um, once we pass our childbearing age, we have to learn how to have fun with sex. Well, hopefully we're learning that before that. But we also have to learn how to accept our bodies the way they are, you know, with wrinkles and all, and that they're changing. And a lot of women are not good at that, just like a lot of men are not good at, at accepting reality. And um, I see that in my practice all the time. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't learn how to have fun. I mean, I had to learn how to accept my body. This was not happening over, over a week or not even a month. And I also had to learn how to, that there was more fun to have with sex. And I realized that as, as soon as I had my hysterectomy and my female parts were taken out, the first time I had sex after that, without the fear or without the thought of getting pregnant, I wasn't even aware how much more joy I was having, how much more fun I was having. So um, it's, it's something that we have to evolve into and that we both, men and women, can evolve into. And like I said, there's always the help out there. I can help you if you struggle with that. But if you are a middle-aged woman who has accepted and has found her fun in sex and doesn't want to be celibate and doesn't want to be alone you know i recommend you take a younger lover there's enough younger man out there who not only appreciate but desire a sexually mature middle-aged woman and if you've done your work as a male and you have um and you have uh, accepted your body the way it is and your identity is not depending on a stud-like performance of your penis then you may want to take a look at the middle-aged woman that is right next to you the hot as hell middle-aged woman and you two can have a wonderful time until you know death do you part or until you 
can't anymore. So um, I don't think I don't think nature is cruel. I think our society is cruel by keeping fun and joy and sex in a compartment of young bodies and young ages and that's just not true you know we have actually now the opportunity to uh, leave our egos at the door to learn and to do our work and to let our bodies teach us what kind of sex we can have no matter what age we are so if you need any help with this and a lot of you out there do Give me a call and we can start that beautiful process for you. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.